Hello, Laura back. And this time we're looking at L5M1 learning objective four question. And this is based on a case study. So let's have a look at the question and read the case. Okay, so this is our question for today. Discuss the approaches that Charles could take to the training and development of the procurement staff at Midlana in order to improve performance. So what everything that we're thinking about as we're reading this case study together is the approaches that Charles may take for the training and development of the Midlana staff. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's have a read. So Thermo Systems Limited is a leading manufacturer and distributor of heating and hot water systems and services. TSL operates in 20 countries worldwide, employing over 5,000 people. Its core product lines are the manufacturing of both wall hung and floor standing condensing and conventional boilers. Don't tell me that I don't talk about sexy topics with you guys. More recently, the company has developed new product lines in solar heating and heat pumps. In terms of its manufacturing facilities, the company operates plants in Germany, Italy, Spain, and the UK. Over the last few years, TSL has been developing its sales in Eastern Europe, Turkey, Russia, and China. The company has recently acquired a boiler manufacturer based in Eastern Europe, Midlana Instruments, to assist its growth in this region. Whilst Midlana had achieved a high market share in its own market, its manufacturing facilities are in need of modernization. So we know that the training and development that we're talking about is for Midlana, so keep that in mind. As part of the acquisition, a group of senior engineers from TSL based in the UK had spent time analysing the facilities and working practices of Midlana's operations. The engineers found that whilst Midlana's advantage was that its labour costs were low, working practices were very bureaucratic with a strict hierarchy of levels of management, supervisors and staff. In addition, the engineers found that individual manufacturing operations were very labor intensive, with, in many cases, three times as many people carrying out tasks compared to more modern facilities at TSL's other plants. They also found that industrial relations were problematical throughout Midlana and disputes between departments were frequent. So we've got a few issues here, guys, just a few. Marcin Petrova is the head of procurement at Midlana with 10 staff in the department. Marcin reports to the head of European procurement at TSL, Charles Schultz. On a recent visit to the Midlana's procurement department, Charles found that the procurement team were largely demotivated and suspicious of the consequences of the acquisition. Two members of the staff were on long-term sick leave and staff absenteeism and turnover were increasing. The decision had been made to retain the procurement department at Midlana as it's felt that the team's knowledge of locally sourced components and local contractors that service the manufacturing facilities need to be retained. So they're keeping them, so they're gonna to have to train them. In time, as Midlana's product range adopts standardized designs and product ranges, more use can be made of global contracts for the supply of components and services. But in the short term, Charles feels that it's necessary to improve the skills and motivation of the personnel working in procurement. So it sounds like long-term they could get rid of them, but short-term he needs to train them up. Charles found that there was a great deal of conflict and rivalry between procurement members of staff and with procurement's internal customers. He was surprised at the degree of anger often shown by members of staff towards each other and had thought that they would be would have behaved better when he visited the facilities. I like that they just didn't care. They're just going to scream at each other in front of the director. There was a distinct lack of teamwork and Charles knew that the members of his central procurement team would find cooperation with their counterparts at Midlana difficult. So we've already got an issue with collaboration right from the start. Charles was also surprised to find that the members of the Midlana team were poorly trained and the members of staff lacked job descriptions for their roles. He found a great deal of duplication of effort in their work. Okay, so we definitely need some training. Let's look back at the question. Discuss the approaches that Charles could take to the training and development of the procurement staff at Midlana in order to improve performance. We always start with a Definition, so we're going to define training. Training is the process of learning the skills you need to do a particular job or activity. And it sounds like Midlana need that because everything's outdated, they're very manual, and they're obviously demotivated. So essentially, this question, when you break it down, is asking you to do, or asking Charles to do, a training needs analysis on the team in Midlana. So this question is asking for us to explain the training needs analysis process and design an individual training program for the Midlana staff. So this 
will include the following stages. I want to take you through these. The first stage is assessment of current competencies. What are they capable of doing now? Job analysis, what is it that they need to do now and in the future? And creating job descriptions. So all of this, you can link back to Midlana. Every point we're making here, you need to link back to the case. They don't have job descriptions. We're not sure exactly what they're capable of doing. So you've got to do a kind of on the ground assessment. What can they currently do? And then we can look at what do they need to do for the future? So the evaluation of future skills requirements using the data against organizational requirements. So essentially, what can they do now? What can they do in future or what will we need in the future? And then from that, we can identify the gap. Now, the gap between what they can currently do and what we're going to need them to do is the training or skills gap, basically based on those results. And I think it's quite clear from the case that there's going to be a big gap there. So once you've identified that there is a gap between current and future needs, we then determine what the training needs of Midlana are. So you determine training needs of individuals and of the team as a whole. So once you, you know, you've done that, maybe Marcin Petrova, who is the head of procurement there, may need to speak to each individual team member, as well as doing some kind of team building exercises, because they obviously hate each other. So there needs to be something that's done. Um, and decide what the needs are. Maybe they need SIPs training. Maybe they need motivational team building training. And then once they've decided what the training that they need is, they decide whether it's going to be on the job or off the job training. On the job might be sitting with a mentor. It could be some kind of internal training while they're doing their their day to day job. Off the job tends to be more lectures and visits and and so on and so on. Once he's decided on that, they can agree on an appropriate budget and maybe compile a business case, a cost benefit analysis to Charles to say, right, it's going to cost us this much, but we need to get them up to this scratch quickly. Again, it sounds like long term, they maybe want to get rid of them. So they're probably not going to want a huge budget. So this is how you link it back. You're taking generic points and you're linking it back to the case. So listen to what I'm doing because you need to do this in your exam. And uh, so once they've done the cost benefit, he'll need to gain approval from those senior managers. So get that sign off and so on. So it's not just about determining the training needs of the organization or department as a whole. It's also looking at each individual. There's obviously individual resentment going on between different members of the team. So it is important to be basically evaluate the effectiveness of training used for each individual and decide how to do that. Develop personal development plans or PDRs, personal development reviews for all members of the team so that they have something to work towards. They've got that yardstick that knows whether or not they're performing. And if you've watched the video on job satisfaction, you know that's a huge impact in motivation and job satisfaction. And then scheduling, sequencing and phasing of training activities. So it can't be a big bang because that would mean the entire department would be out at the same time. So they may need to schedule it and do it in phased plots. So if you go through all of those stages from current skills assessment, future skill requirements, identifying the gap, determining your training needs and determining the individual training needs, you will have covered everything that the question is asking for. You can throw in, you know, different points and different links to the case study. But as long as you are saying what needs to happen and every point you're making, you're drilling back to the case, however vaguely, then you should be able to pick up decent marks on this question, which students notoriously do find difficult. So I hope you found this useful. Please listen to it again. It is a popular question and one that you need to prepare for. And I'll see you back for another constructive response question soon. Bye for now. <laughs>